And when we read the genealogy of Jesus, it's kind of one of the most boring parts of the scriptures. The only interesting thing is to hear these very awkward and odd names for us, very strange names. And then you, we try to understand why this genealogy was even there in the first place. Does it matter whose father is who? Does it matter whose son is who? Well, it does matter because the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew is actually trying to trace the lineage of Jesus to the prophecy. And that became very essential, that from the prophecy comes forth Jesus. The prophecy is what we find in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, when prophet Isaiah would say, a shoot shall come up from the stump of Jesse. So from the line of King David, will come the Savior. So it is important for Matthew to prove that, that lineage, that it, Jesus comes from the prophecy. Matthew is speaking to, um, to a Jewish audience, and his audience is directed towards the Jews, so he has to prove this prophecy. Unlike Luke, Luke is speaking, his gospel is directed towards the poor, and those who are rejected. But, but Matthew is speaking very specifically to the Jews, so he needs to prove the, that Jesus comes from the prophecy. And that means Jesus comes from the line of King David. So Jesus' roots lay in an ancestry that was filled with kings. And yet, we read that Jesus was not born in a, sta in, in a palace. Jesus did not even get an inn. Jesus got a stable. A stable is where the Lord was born in a little manger. A king who should have had a palace. Even in a physical, even in a material way, he should have had a palace because he comes from the line of David. And yet he was born in a stable. Come to think of it, the stable became the place that embraced Jesus. The stable is an attitude that we too need to have. My first experience of having a, having a priest or coming in close contact with a priest was when uh, we were in uh, we were staying in Sharjah at that time, and um, um, a priest, Father Almeida, I know I remember his name, but I was I was maybe in year five or so. But uh, Father Almeida came and st stayed in our house for around two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. He was a priest in the Archdiocese of Mumbai, and um, my aunt or my godmother actually knew him, so he was visiting uh, Dubai and the other places. So she asked my parents if we could actually have this priest stay in our house. So this is the first time I actually came in close contact with a priest. You know, otherwise the priest was always the one behind the altar. I stayed far away from the priest. I, I didn't want to do anything with the priest. I was an altar boy only once in my life, so there was no connection with the priest. This was the first person, uh, first priest I actually came in contact with because he was staying in our house. So all of us, my brother, my sister, and me were, were dumped into one room together. And my, I think it was my sister's room that was given to the priest. And so he was there in our house. He ate with us. I loved that two weeks. One, because my mother and father would not scream at me during those days. You know, anything I did wrong, they'd ignore. They just give the stares, but they can't do anything. He's there in the house. And, but... But I really enjoyed the time being there, being, being close to, to the priest. And um, I don't remember any of our conversations. I don't, I don't think there were any genuine conversations that took place between him and me. But it was just that, 
that wonderful feeling of being um, being in a house or being in a home that had the priest in it. Someone who was, who was very far away from me before, one set of people who were very far away from me before, but the moment the priest entered into the house and stayed with us, that home, the environment changed. That was a special experience for me, even now I can remember it very clearly. You take the, the, the nativity scene and you take the stable, the stable has nothing special in it. It's a stable. It has, it has animals in it. And though for us, when we make our cribs and we make our nativity scenes, it's all very, very special to put all these lovely characters inside. I love making cribs. And uh, this time, we didn't get a chance to, to, to make anything elaborate. Next year, definitely, we'll make something elaborate, because I love cribs. And, uh, um, but you make all the cribs, and, and uh, Father Joby and myself, when we were in Sydney, we've made cribs with fountains and, and waterfalls and everything falling in. So I'm, I'm a big craze about, about cribs. But it all looks very good and very nice. But let's be, let's be very honest. In the crib or in the, in the stable, you have all these animals, and the animals are good to look at from far. They are not good to actually be around. Be around cattle all the time, it stings. You know, e even dogs, for that matter. You know, you, we have two pups over here. I, I love dogs as well. It's, it's wonderful to have dogs, but I'm in charge of the dogs. So every day in the morning, I'm the one doing the cleaning. And, and for now, we've put them up in the balcony, so I have to, I have to clean up. And I tell you, as they are growing, you know, it's, it's like little babies. When babies are small and they poo, it doesn't smell too bad. But when they start growing, the quantity increases. So taking care of those dogs now, it's, it's not as easy as, I mean, it's not the first time I've had dogs. I've had dogs before as well. But it's not as pretty as it seems. And I have this, this kind of a problem. If anybody's coming, I need the dog to be clean. I need the place to be clean. So any time the volunteers come, early in the morning, I'll be cleaning up. And there's a lot of cleaning up to do because they seem to be, uh, they seem to be discharging waste all the time maybe according to how much they are eating. So all these things look good on, 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 you know, on, on, a, uh, on the outside, just as a stable and this nativity scene looks very good on the exteriors, but it's not easy to be, or, or it's the reality of a nativity scene or the reality of a stable is that there would be a stench. The reality of the stable is that it's not a really pretty sight. What makes it special for us is the reality of Jesus being born in the stable. So the presence of Christ in the stable is what made the difference, is what makes it special, is what makes it anointed. When you have Christ being born in the stable, so the stable now is no more just a place where a few animals are there, but the Son of God is now within the stable. That's a huge difference. And maybe it's something for us to remember as well. Can we be like the stable? Because very often our lives resemble the stable. Our families resemble the stable. Not very pretty in reality broken, there's the stench of sin, there's the stench of broken relationships, there's the stench of unforgiveness, there's a lot of stench within our lives and within our families as well. And during this season of Christmas, the one thing we might want to ask ourselves is, are we permitting Jesus to be there as the center of that stable? Then the whole environment changes. The whole environment changes when Jesus comes into it. When the Lord becomes the center of it. 
We can have all the decorations we want. We can have all the celebrations we want. We can have all the Christmas trees we want. We can have all the Christmas stars we want. We can bake all the Christmas cakes we want. But the reality of our homes without Christ is like a stable with just the animals and stench in it. Invite the presence of Christ into it and make Jesus the center. The aroma of Christ will come forth. That is why we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, For we are the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved. We are called to be the aroma of Christ. Our families are meant to be the aroma of Christ. The stable of our families becomes the aroma of Christ. Only if Christ becomes the center of it. If Christ becomes the reason why we celebrate. The reality of Christmas is not the celebration. The reality of Christmas is Christ in the center of it. Christ becoming the reason why we celebrate. Hallelujah. 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 When Christ becomes the center, then everything else we do around it is centered in that reality of Christ. When, when my aunt, my mother's sister, gave uh, birth to her first child, we were all in Dubai and, and um, no parents, so my, my aunt came home to stay with us because my mother is the eldest sister so my mother is to take care of uh, of her younger sister who has just given birth to the child now we we were not used to having a little child in the house i'm the youngest so i've never seen a little baby in the house and so uh, i think i i'm seven years uh, older than the eldest in that house so i'm seven years old when this child comes into the house and then suddenly, my whole home changes. Everything now is about the baby. Don't run, baby is sleeping. <laughs> Don't make noise, baby is sleeping. Don't put on the TV, baby is sleeping. Everything became about the baby. I can't remember very clearly, but I'm sure according to my behavioral pattern, I would have been waiting to think, when will this baby go back home? But everything became about the baby because the baby became the center of that house. If Jesus is the center of the stable of our lives, the stable that has all its tench of our brokenness and sadness and, and nastiness and weaknesses and everything, if Jesus becomes the center, then everything suddenly changes. The environment in it changes. Jesus becomes the very cornerstone of our homes. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16, See, I'm laying in Zion a foundation stone, a precious cornerstone. Your family, your life is that Zion. See, I'm placing in Zion a cornerstone. My presence I'm placing, my son I'm placing as a cornerstone of your Zion, of your stables. Are we ready to make Jesus the cornerstone? When we make Jesus the cornerstone, then everything else revolves around Jesus. Are we going to then be like that little child who complained and said, Oh, I can't put on the TV because of this baby in the house. I can't make noise because of this baby in the house. Oh, I can't do things because of this Jesus in my house. Because Jesus has now become the center. If that disturbs me, then my stable will continue to remain a stench. If Jesus being, in, if being the center of my stable is going to disturb me, then my family will continue to remain a stench. My life will continue to remain a stench. Unless and until we go beyond the exteriors of what we see on the outside and go to the core of the reason why we celebrate, what we celebrate, 
what we proclaim in our Christmas celebrations. Unless and until we do that, our homes will remain a stable with a stench. Our lives will remain a stable with a stench. Make Jesus the core of it all. Today when we are, uh, these couple of days, we are celebrating the, the anniversary of this retreat center. You will see a lot of externals in the retreat center. But that is what this retreat center is, what the retreat center is meant to be, is to spread the aroma of Christ. Jesus being the center of this place. Irrespective of what you will see as constructions over here, they are only the frills. They are only the exteriors. They are only the comforts of the center. They are not the center. The, the, the very core of this retreat center is meant to be Jesus. This place was just a marshy land. Some of you would have seen it before I got to see it. I got to see more, uh, 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 more of a completed product. But it was just a marshy land with a lot of overgrowth of a lot of things. Over a period of time, the Lord has used different people in different ways to make what you see today. There will still be more constructions that will come out. But those are all just the frills. All the, all the comforts you get on the chairs you sit or on the fans that are there to give you air or what, whatever we have over here as externals in our equipments and in everything, those are just the frills. Jesus is meant to be the core of this very center. This place otherwise will remain a stable with a stench. Just a marshy land that has just got a bit of touch up onto it. Unless and until Jesus becomes the core, we can never become the aroma of Christ. It's amazing in a stable, it should be the aroma, it shouldn't be an aroma, it should be a stench. But look at the nativity scene, it always seems like an aroma of Christ. The message of Christ is what comes out. We don't speak about the we don't speak about the cattle inside there. We don't speak about the sheep inside there. We speak about the Jesus in the stable. When people look at us and when people look at our families, they should be able to speak about the Jesus at the core of our families. They should be able to speak about the Jesus in the core of our lives as well. Not about the frills and fancies of what we have. This Christmas you might give great parties and you might enjoy yourself all you want. You might have wonderful Christmas trees in your home and you might have grand banquets. But that's not the message. If people will look back at the end of your Christmas gathering and the next day and the day after, they will come and say, oh, you know, we went to Peter's house and what a banquet. What a layout of things. That's sad if that's going to be your message. Because that is what ends up being our message. Oh, we went to that house. What a lovely Christmas tree was there. Oh, well, you go to any of the hotels as well, you'll find many Christmas trees. Is that our message? Unless and until Jesus becomes the core, Jesus will never be the message. Unless and until we keep him at the core, Jesus will never become the message. People will, will praise you for your amazing cooking. That's not the message. People will praise you for all that you do during Christmas. That is not the message. You are not the message. Jesus is the message. Let him be the core. And then the stench of the stable will turn into the aroma of Christ. Let that be proclaimed to the world. Let's close eyes. Lord, this season, everyone celebrates. Everyone gets excited. There's so many things on the outside that excite. But Lord, for me as a stable, 
filled with the stench of my own weaknesses, my own faults, my own mistakes. I pray that you be the center. You be the very core so that everything I do revolves around you. Lord, when everything I do revolves around you, it will be your fragrance that will be in me. And when I go forth, I will be proclaiming with the aroma of Christ. Let the stable of my heart, the stable of my families, be filled with the presence of my Christ. And let myself and my family give forth the message, the message of the Savior who came to save us. Lord, we offer all our families to you. We offer the woundedness in our families. We offer the troubles, the pain and the sorrows in our family. We offer, Lord, the stench of sin and betrayal in our families. We offer the weaknesses in our families. Oh Lord, we pray. Let our families be filled with your holy and sacred presence. Lord, we pray for those we have seen who are struggling in life, our neighbors, our friends. Those who are struggling in their own relationships, those who are struggling with their faith. Lord, let me not have an attitude of Cain who said, I'm not my brother's keeper. Lord, I am my brother's keeper. If I have seen my brother in pain, I've seen my sister in sorrow and distress. Today here, I offer my prayer for them. Look kindly on them, O oh Jesus. Enter their lives and be the center of their life. Let your fragrance and your aroma fill their lives, O oh Jesus. We pray, Lord, for every sick person who is here. They might be sitting next to us, physically going through a lot of pain on their bodies. Have mercy on them, Jesus. Lord, we pray for the youth, for young people in our families. For many of them, oh Lord, you're not the center anymore. They are young, they get excited with external things, external celebrations. We offer our young ones to you. Knock at their door, O oh Jesus, till they open their hearts and enter and dine with them. Lord, accept the prayers that we make from our heart. Prayers for ourselves and prayers for our families. Have mercy on these prayers. As the bread and wine, we will lift up into your presence, O oh Father, and you will transform them into the precious body and blood of your beloved Son. Transform the prayers that we are offering to you. Prayers that come from our pain and our struggles. Prayers that come from hope. Transform them into great moments of joy and blessings.